We're only missing the most important part here. That does not increase the value of your home. I mean, if we're talking about an emergency, I think it's one of those things that might just come and go. People will just stop buying this feature and it will just die, just die off. So maybe somebody can explain it to me, but I just don't understand the uh, vehicle to grid technology. <laughs> I mean, I understand how it works. I just don't understand uh, the, the purpose of it. So if you want solar power, if you want to power your electric car with solar power, get the solar, get the battery. There are tons of different, you know, solutions uh, uh, for that. It doesn't have to be Tesla or one can be Tesla. Another one can be something else. Um, but that's what your solution should be for either saving money, for example, or if you do live in an area where it is important to you when the power is out for more than a day, uh, that you do have power guarantee, right? Even though these batteries, a lot of times, they're very costly, and a lot of times you can only get two or three days out of it, and if it's a week-long problem like you know they had in Texas before I moved there, that, that, that kind of renders your efforts useless or half useless. Um, I just, again, like for, for the car to be the battery for the house during, like I said, when there's a power outages, especially because of the uh, natural disasters, I don't know if we should even call them natural anymore, but, you know, uh, and that, by, by the way, you are depleting the battery of your vehicle. So essentially you can't really go that far. I'm assuming you would want to go uh, when you have a power outage. So kind of you're limiting yourself how far the car can go and whether or not you can even go because obviously if you leave with your car, uh, you can no longer power the house. If it's powering a refrigerator or some important medical equipment, that's that's a whole different story. Um, uh, and yes, I understand you can power it for three days, but like again, don't forget, don't project everything that you have on everybody else. I believe that majority of people who do get batteries, they get about one day worth because it is very expensive. It's one of the most expensive parts of the solar installation. So to me, uh, you know, depending on your car for your houses, like once a year, let's say, I would say at worst, lack of power for three or four days. Um, it kind of just doesn't really make sense. Not just financial sense, but like I said, you have to have extra equipment and it is expensive right now. On top of that, like uh, you have to conceal, like if you if you have equipment for the Ford F-150 Lightning, then and, and then after the lease expires, you cannot go and buy yourself a Cybertruck or, or, or a Silverado EV or Rivian because it's a completely different system and your next car might not even have that, right? So that's why I don't quite understand why you would want to tie up your vehicle to your home, uh, invest all of this money for once in a, in a while event that still robs you of having your car. So that's, that's, that's the part that I, you know, I, I don't really understand. Um, Mark says, according to Tesla's website, my setup is already power share ready. They, well, <laughs> let's see when it actually happens, right? Tesla says a lot of stuff on their website and Twitter, and that does not necessarily mean that that's actually true. The only missing pieces are vehicle capable of, well, yeah. Just, we're only missing the most important part here. And a software update based on my current home setup. Um, nothing else to install. Um, so... Listen, like I said, it it is it just I I I I get it I get it. People do that. My friend Tom Malogny, he has that setup and he loves it. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people just have all this money to so like if money is no no option, then yeah, sure, do that. But I think a lot of people do care about their budget. They do care if they're going to have to dish out ten thousand dollars on an equipment for a car that they may not even have in three or four years, just so it can power this house, especially because you know like solar panels and a solar you know batteries for your home do increase the value of your home um i mean there you can argue by how much and you know all of that stuff but it does but if you have ford's equipment to power your home from the from your f-150 lightning truck that does not increase the value of your home because the next person moving in let's say if you sell your home is not necessarily going to have an F-150 Lightning or, or would want to buy one. So there's just so many, uh, th there's just so many things. Oh yeah, and, and by the way, I agree. There are so many cheap uh, uh, alternatives. Uh, 
and including the gas power generator, right? I mean, if we're talking about an emergency, right? If we're talking an emergency, then a uh, gas power generator and a bunch of gas that you have to store is a pretty decent solution. Is it the most environmentally friendly solution? No, but nothing that you do can be 100% environmentally friendly, right? The, the, the Amazon truck that's delivering to your neighborhood, unless it's Rivian, but you know we can go with FedEx and others, will still pollute the planes and trains and semi-trucks that are delivering almost everything you have in your house will still pollute. So if you are that concerned about the power outage, <laughs> and, and, and you do need a, an alternative solution, I would say the cheaper solution and probably more efficient solution would unfortunately, and I know I'm saying this on an electric car channel, would be for now a gas generator, though there are plenty of products that also have a portable um, uh, um, battery generator. So, you know, it, 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 it's just, I just don't understand this technology. I think it's one of those things that might just come and go. Um, people get excited about it, like it's kind of cool thing to do, and and um, you know the manufacturers are able to do it, and maybe have a leverage on their competition one way or another. But at the end of the day, I think once people realize what it does and what it doesn't, and how much it's going to cost, and what the alternatives are, then I think people will just stop buying this feature, and it will just die, just die off. Um, so yeah, vehicle to grid, I don't get it. Don't get it.